Hey guys, so nowadays it's so important to write your own test as a developer. So if you like, uh, if you build any feature of Angular, you need to write unit tests, exception tests, and integration tests, and possibly end-to-end -end tests using Selenium. So this tutorial is about intro to unit testing. We're going to look at Protractor, Jasmine Syntax, and Karma, where we can have the uh, same test running on multiple browsers. We're going to learn how to configure them, set it up, and we're going to write some unit tests, including test a service function. And welcome to Texas Tutorials. In Angular, uh, if you build your application using uh, Angular CLI, you will have the whole test framework configured for you. So you'll have the Protractor, Jasmine, and Karma available to you. Uh, Protractor basically helps you run your test against your browser. Uh, you don't no longer have to uh, add those wait function and sleep function in your test, it will automatically figure out when one step finishes, it would run this, uh, the next step. Jasmine is your behavior driven test environment. So you're going to be writing your test in Jasmine and Jasmine will allow you to uh, structure your uh, test code uh, properly. And lastly, Karma would help you run these tests in multiple browser sometime at the same time. So basically you write your test in Jasmine, it will run in Protractor and uh, it will allow you to do multiple browser using Karma. So that's uh, in nutshell. All right, so let's start with building an app. So I'm just going to go to command line. And uh, if you don't know how to create a project using Angular CLI, I have a tutorial on it. And by the way, this is a part of the much larger series on Angular. So I'll provide a, a, a link to the playlist here. So in nutshell, what do you do? Would you say ng new that with a new project and I'm just gonna call it ng5 jasmine karma uh, test or something like that okay all right so it has created a project from for me so I'm just gonna go inside so I'm gonna do cd ng karma test and I'm gonna open the code I'm using Adam by the way first let's look at the protractor configuration so at the root level, you'll have a protractor config.js, and it will have some basic configuration available to you. For example, your base URL, where the project's gonna be loaded, some default interval time and all that stuff. Uh, but you need to know that if you were to change something, you'll go here and change it. And then you will have your Karma configuration. So here, it, it has some plugins. So for example, it has a Jasmine plugin, a Chrome launcher. So let's say if you want to use Firefox, you need to use a Firefox launcher. We'll, we'll try to do that when we come to that point. And here, your how many browsers you're supporting right now? It's Chrome, but you can add more here too. So I would suggest that go and look at look this into more detail and play around with it. And that's how you learn. I run this thing by doing ng serve dash dash open so now you have a welcome to app title here it has already some tests written for it so if you go to app component dot spec dot ts this is how protractor understands that there is a test written for it it's looking for specs spec dot ts file and if i look at the the file it simply is trying to actually check if that welcome to app is there or not and if I run the test all you have to say is ng test and it opens the karma and I can see that it has three tests uh, which have passed now let's create our own test uh, we're gonna look at these tests later on but I want to focus on how to write tests from scratch so I'm going to go in the app folder and create a new new file and I'm going to call it uh, hello test dot uh, spec dot ts. Remember, it has to be well. It's actually spec dot ts, so that Protractor would know that this this test needs to be run. So now, first thing I need to do is I need to create 
the, the page and because this is a hello test page. So I would call it using describe. So I would say describe and I would name my test uh, hello and inside you would have a callback function. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to have uh, a two string and I'm just going to compare them. And so the way you write the test, you would say it, write the name of the test here. So it's a it checks if uh, hello test is hello test. And then you're going to write the test. So in the callback function, expect. So this is what you're expecting. Expect this string hello test dot to be and I'm going to say hello test so basically what it's doing is it's trying to compare this string hello test with hello test so this is a simple syntax you need to understand so if you read this test it's pretty simple it checks if hello test is hello test so where you expect hello test to be hello test so now let's run this test. All right, so it says this has already passed because previously we had three tests. Now we have hello test, which already passed. Now if I do, now if I, instead of hello test, if I do this, expect hello test to be hello test one, then it's gonna fail because they are not the same. So if I save this, all right, See, it failed. It says hello test to be hello test one has failed because there it's comparing the, the, the text. Let's say if you want to compare something, something is not something. Expect something is not something, right? In that case, and I'm going to write in a second line here. And this time I'm going to say hello test is not hello test. Okay, so if I do some other stuff, uh, text then I can use dot not so it would say expect hello test dot not to be hello test one two three so this would pass because they are not supposed to be equal on both sides of not to be so if I save this oh they're both passing this time now having this text is not a good idea because let's say if you want to have the same text uh, happening in multiple tests then you should have a variable that you can save this text into and use a variable everywhere else so if we want to do that then you need to use this variable into a special function uh, which would be called before each so I would say and inside I would have a callback function and here here I would create a variable call expected equal to um, it would be this hello test now I need to define this variable and I would define it outside here so I would say let uh, expected equal to an empty string so initially it's empty string and before I run each test it should set expected equal to hello test now I can use this expected instead of here and if I save it and run it, it's passing. And similarly, I can say let not uh, expected equal to also an empty. And here I can set the not expected uh, equal to this guy. Hello test one, two, three. And replace this with not expected. And also what I want to do is after this test, I want to clean up this variable. So I have another function called uh, after each. But instead of setting up the variable, it's cleaning up the variable. So it would simply do this. Now let's say if you don't want to use like the fix uh, to be expected and you want to use a regex so that you can say it starts with hello or something. So we can write something like this. So I'm just going to copy and paste. And I would say check if hello's, hello's test it starts with something like this. So here, instead of to be, I can use to match. 
and what I'm trying to match. So here I would have a regex. So what I'll do, I'll create um, a variable here uh, for regex. And I would say let uh, expect uh, match equal to null. Because it will be an object, right? It's not a string. And I can say expect uh, match equal to new. If you know regex, you have to use new. Uh, reg regex and here I would say I believe this is the right syntax if I'm making a mistake I'm sorry okay so now I would use this expect match and here so it would try to match if this is starting with hello alright so it does matches let's say if you don't want certain text test to run then all you have to do is put X in front of it and when you do that and when you do that, as you can see, it's, it did not run this. As you can see, it's not green. You can see here only three ran instead of six because I said not to run by putting X in front of describe, which is very useful. Sometimes you would say only run this test and ignore all other tests um, because you wrote this one test and if you want to test it out, you don't want to run the entire set of tests every time you change this, right? Right now we have only like six tests, so it's not a big deal, but if you have a thousand tests, it could take a long time, right? So all you have to do is put F in front of whichever test you wanna force run and ignore everything else. It will run only hello test and it would ignore the all the app tests. As you can see, it's uh, the hello tests are green. Now the objective of a unit test is to test a particular function uh, particular functionality in its isolation. So in order to do that, let's create a service with a function. To have a new service, I can use Angular CLI. So I would just say ng g means generate and service and I'm going to call it test. That's all. And it will create a new service for me and it would actually create a test for me as well. So here it created a um, test service which is empty and it has a test service spec. So now let's look, let's go into test service and write a simple function. All right, so inside this service, I'm just gonna write a add function. So add function takes two numbers, A and B, and it would simply returns A plus B. All right, now if we go back to the service test, let's look at it in detail. The first thing it, you would see is import function. So you would need a test pair. So this helps you if you have a service, you need to inject it inside the, uh, the test so you can use it, right? So you would have a test bed and it's actually part of the Angular core. And then you need to import the service that you're testing, which, which we just created, test service. And remember, we looked at the before each function. All it does is before running every test, it needs to do something. So in this case, we need to actually inject service for every single test we run. You would take the test bed, which is this, and you would say, configure the testing module and you set the provider. So when you when you have a service, you need to have a provider, which says should have, should be, it should be created, which means a service should be created. So it, before you test a service, you, you want to make sure the service is there, right? So it injects a service, uh, service as a test service, and it expects the service to be truthy. To be truthy means, is it there or not? If it's null, then it would be false. All right, so now that we have a service, let's write some more tests so we can test that add function. So first thing, we want to make sure that there is an add function, right? So we can say it, um, as you expected, it says it should have add function. All right. So here I can say expect uh, service dot add because service has add function. And here I can say to be truthy. All right. It says it should have add function. Let's say if I say add one, which doesn't exist, it should fail. All right, so as you can see, it's failing. Now, the second thing we want to do is, now that we know it has add function, 
it should add correctly. So I can write another unit test, say uh, sh it should add uh, correctly. So here, in sort of to be truthy, I can actually execute this function, add function. So I can pass one and two. And now I can say two, correct? So basically, if you pass two, one and two, it, you expect it to be three. All right, so it works correctly. All right, so lastly, what we want to do is we want to configure Karma. So when we run our test, it would run both on Chrome and Firefox. And you can configure other browsers as well if you want to. So I'm just going to do for two browsers. So if I go to uh, karma config.js, here inside the plugins, I would need to have another per plugin called so require, and I would say uh, karma dash Firefox uh, launcher. And I would also need to add in the browsers I would have to have Firefox however this plugin is not automatically available so you might have to npm install it go to my console and type this npm install karma firefox launcher dash dash save dash dev so it's a ng test now it should open for both uh, chrome and firefox uh, I made a mistake. I should say karma, not karma. Okay, now if I run it. All right, so it has open in Firefox and Chrome. And both are passing. Anyway, I'll put this project onto my Git and provide uh, a link in the description so you can download and play around with it. And I hope you learned something from this tutorial. And if you did, please like, like, like the video and provide a nice comment. Thank you.